Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Remember what I always say, you have to get your antenna up there. Height is probably the most important factor in uh, antenna performance, uh, of course, aside from their design and uh, also the coax you're going to be using. Uh, but it's usually, um, not in all cases, but usually it's better to get your antenna high up. Uh, that's because of the uh, curvature of the earth and, of course, to clear obstacles that might be in your way. Um, so, in order to do that, especially uh, uh, portable, uh, usually for HF, I use a fishing pole. Uh, it's very easy, you attach a wire to the fishing pole, you extend it, and uh, you get uh, 10, 11 meters, you know, 33, 36 feet of uh, height like that and you feed your antenna at the bottom. But when it comes to VHF or UHF or, uh, well, even six meters, uh, how do you do that? Because the antenna has a certain weight to it. Uh, you need to get it up there, and uh, a fishing pole is just not going to do it because it's going to bend, and uh, it will just basically, it might even break your, uh, your fishing pole. Although you can check uh, Peter Parker's uh, channel, uh, he's in Australia and uh, he has uh, very good stuff uh, on his channel. Um, he does use a telescopic uh, fishing pole for a three element Yagi. And he doesn't put it all the way up to the top of the pole, but you know, maybe a, a couple, uh, a few feet uh, below where it's a little thicker. And it seems to work for him, so I guess it's possible. Um, I think if it's uh, something that's, well, not permanent, but if you install a mast for, say, uh, a few days, uh, you might want to use guy wires. Uh, it will be much more secure and maybe a little sturdier. So having a good mast, uh, a radio antenna mast, is important, I think. Uh, it's not very portable, that's true, uh, although there are models that are, of course, uh, telescopic, so those are better. Uh, I got myself one. Uh, it's uh, a mask from Poland. It's for a VHF antenna. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, keep in mind that most of those uh, military uh, poles are made of uh, four foot or one meter section. Uh, that's not the one I got. I'll say that later again. Uh, these uh, poles are made of uh, aluminum or uh, fiberglass, come from uh, the US or the UK, and uh, have uh, four foot sections, and you can um, put them together and to, to have uh, up to uh, probably about eight sections. And, and those are good too, uh, but I wanted something a little more uh, lightweight. So I went for the eight meter polish. Uh, I don't know if it's made in Poland, but I got it from their uh, mast. And uh, it has uh, eyelets for guy wires. Uh, you'll see all that, I'll show it to you now actually. And um, you can see what it looks like. And then I'll, uh, well, I'll set it up and uh, put an antenna on it and we'll see, uh, we'll see how it works. Let's have a look. We all need a good mast. So I got one from Poland. So I guess you could say I got a pole from Poland. All right, I'll stick to radio. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so this one is an eight meter pole comprised of eight one meter sections aluminum uh, it has also uh, of course it comes in a bag and it has a, an antenna with it so um, and I was a little bit confused about it because I wasn't quite sure what the different sections uh, were for and um, we have these little guys I thought these were radials, but uh, they're not. They're actually antenna elements, or I should say sections to extend uh, the whip. It comes with a whip. So there are 12 of them. And uh, you can assemble them. They're spring-loaded. 
to make an extension. You can actually use them for radials uh, to extend the radials as well. So uh, you can adjust your uh, antenna for the frequency you're going to be uh, operating on, which is a pretty smart design. It's supposed to be lightweight. So uh, in military terms, that means that uh, a common mortal can actually uh, lift it off the ground. The whip, uh, I've seen them uh, advertised by themselves on eBay. They're a little weird, uh, but uh, also a very smart design. I can actually unclamp this. Not sure I can do it. Ah, not quite. It was very hard to put on. I had to use uh, put them into uh, tubes on both ends and use the tubes to uh, to open it. But uh, once you uh, unlock it, uh, it actually uh, can coil. It's just a wire with those little plastic sleeves. But it's pretty rigid once it's uh, it's clamped. It's pretty nice. These are the radials. I thought at first there were um, antenna elements. And surprisingly enough, there is a copper rod inside them. Ah, there we go. So uh, pretty nice radials. I guess maybe it, they can be extended as well. I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah, that locks the copper rod, so you can extend the radials to the length you want, which is great. There are three of them. Those radials plug into this uh, antenna head, and you can see here where the mast goes. And there is a, uh, an RF connector here. It's proprietary, I guess. These are for the, the three radials. So, of course, the coax goes through the mast. And the mast sections, whoops, aluminum. Some of them with uh, guy wire eyelets. Pretty nice. The mast is a little wobbly. Uh, once you put it together without the guy wires, I wouldn't use it like that. But um, with the guy wires, uh, it should be fine. And we have three of these giant super heavy stakes. The heaviest part of the kit. But uh, they're sure not going to break. Coax included. BNC terminated. Of course, it's a military antenna. And here is the weird proprietary. It might be a sort of, uh, well, PL259 here, I'm not sure. It's uh, RG58, yep, RG58, and uh, there's probably about 10 meters here. And the whole thing was like, uh, was less than $100 shipped, so pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. The base of the antenna has a little spike on the bottom, so if you're going to be using it on a sidewalk or anything like that, uh, you're going to have to find a crack. The tube goes in here, of course, and there is a shoulder inside, so uh, there is a little space on the bottom to uh, let the coax go through. It's made of aluminum. The 12 extensions can be put together for a total of 2.4 meters. The whip is a meter 52. So you can make a total of a 3.92 meter antenna, which is, you know, almost 4 meters. So uh, actually uh, close to a quarter wave on 15 meters. So the an included antenna would work on uh, probably 15 meters, uh, 10 meters. Um, the uh, radials are 1 meter long and they can be extended to 1.9 meters. Here's the whip rolled up, and I'll tell you, it's a real pain to uh, to put it together, to clamp it or, or, or unlock it. I wouldn't take it on a long trek, but uh, once the bag is all uh, buckled up, it's actually not too bad. Now, I might later get a kit uh, with uh, fiberglass four foot poles just because uh, they're not metal and uh, there is no interaction between 
the poles, the, your mast, and uh, any antenna you might attach to it, like a wire antenna. It's better in, in this case to use a fiberglass pole. So we have a nice little field here, so I'm going to set up right here. And today we are going to do a VHF a two meter SSB. So we have the mast here, all my equipment, the antenna, some coax cable, a nice little table and my ICOM IC251E. Everything is ready to go up now with the six guy wires. Now I have the uh, OA144 2 meter uh, omnidirectional antenna installed on the mast. This mast is for uh, really for VHF. I wouldn't use it on HF, I would use a uh, telescopic pole for that. Well, it was a bit of a pain to <laughs> to bring up, but uh, once it's up, it's just fine. And it could stay there for quite some time, which is what you would do with uh, such a mast anyway. It's not something you want to just uh, set up for two hours. <laughs> it's for a multiple day uh, operation. CQ, 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 CQ. This is Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee. Ici F4 WBY. QRZ. Ok, bien reçu, Patrice. Bah là, ça passait pas trop mal. Hein. Ah, voilà. Oui, je pensais que c'était notre station. Hein. J'étais carrément à l'envers. Hein. Je passe 320, ok 320, c'est parti. Oui Patrice, bonjour. Hein. Ben là tu passes à euh, plus 20. Hein. <rire> Pas de problème, hein. ça passe très très bien. Hein. Comme je disais, j'ai un mât de 8 mètres et je suis dans un parc là à l'extérieur hein, avec une petite table de camping <rire> et j'essaye pour voir si ça marche. Hein. Je fais une vidéo pour, euh, pour YouTube aussi. À toi. Ah ok. Oui, c'est 59 ici. Hein. Non, c'est 59, il n'y a pas de problème. Hein. Voilà, voilà. So I'm pretty happy with the mast. Here it is against the clouds. Six guy lines. Very nice. Nice day to do some radio. We have 4 MFX is here. F4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee. Fox 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee. Oui, votre département. Département 59 à Comines. Comines. Oui, Raphaël, on s'est contacté une fois, euh, une fois, je crois. Hein. Bah non, là j'ai une antenne euh, horizontale, mais c'est une, euh, c'est un loop. So my opinion of uh, military mast in general, those that come in sections, is that they are excellent for any uh, type of operation that requires to stay in the same spot for quite some time. Uh, you're not going to put up a mast like this uh, <laughs> just for a couple hours. It's not reasonable. Uh, it's also a bit of a pain to carry and uh, it's not that light. Um, I think uh, I might have used a fiberglass mast because uh, that for HF is non-conductive so uh, fiberglass doesn't uh, change the pattern of radiation of your antenna. 
but a metal mast might if the wire is uh, running along the side. Uh, but for a VHF antenna, with UHF, anything like that, excellent. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I could even use my uh, hybrid micro and the whip on top of this mast and uh, that would give me a lot of clearance um, and a good uh, angle of radiation and the whole mast would be the counterpoise. So uh, that was a uh, successful test. I was hoping for DX, well, yeah, maybe England, but uh, it won't be for today. Um, next video, or maybe the one after that, I will be testing a spider beam 12 meter uh, fiberglass pole and uh, that will be with HF and uh, that will be interesting so uh, stay tuned and uh, I will see you next week have a good one